Okay, let's go ahead and combine everyone's favorite topic, and that, of course, is money and math. And uh, some of you out there might be saying, well, the money part's okay, but the math part, not as much. But listen, let's have fun with this anyways. And what we're going to be talking about here is compound interest. Okay, we're going to take a look at a simple uh, compound interest problems. Uh, compound interest is an example of uh, exponential growth. Very, very important in algebra. And uh, this is a good basic problem just to kind of get familiar with compound interest. And uh, this stuff is everywhere. So a lot of times as a math teacher, you know, people will say, when am I ever going to use this? You know, math's not practical. Well, math is everywhere. And we're going to uh, tackle this problem here in just one second. But let's uh, take a look at what we have. So let's invest $500. Okay, that would be our principal amount. Uh, for 10 years at a 6% annual percentage rate. So uh, some bank, of course, that would be great if they're actually given this amount out. Unfortunately, today it's like a half a percent. But uh, if you're an old uh, person like me, or an older, let me say, uh, this uh, interest rate uh, was not uncommon in terms of a savings rate way back in the good old days. But that's another story altogether. But um, Anyway, so if you um, invest this $500 for 10 years, we leave it alone at an annual uh, interest rate of 6%. How much money will uh, will we have over the course of the uh, 10 years? When uh, 10 years later, we go to check our bank account, how much money is going to be there? Well, that's going to be a function of exponential growth or uh, compound interest. So we're going to solve this. Uh, we're going to go through the formula. Uh, for compound interest, basic compound interest, because there's uh, more sophisticated problems. We're just going to focus on uh, a basic problem here for this particular video. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself before we get into that. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. Uh, if you're interested, you could check out my math help program by following uh, the link in the description of this video. But uh, basically, I have 100 plus different math courses uh, ranging from uh, pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two. I'm going to be launching a pre-calculus here shortly. Pretty excited about that. But I also do a lot in the area of test preparation. So if you're studying for the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, CLEP exam, AccuPlace, or Alex, or maybe a teacher certification exam, I uh, like the Praxis exam or a nursing uh, school entrance exam, like the TAS. There's so many exams out there that uh, people have to take, and all these exams have significant amount of mathematics on it. So if you don't do well in the math section, you don't do well on the exam. Of course, we don't want that to happen. So if you're preparing for one of these exams, just go to my website, check out my full course catalog. I should have what you need. Now, if I do not, drop me a line, and I will help you out the best I can. Um, in addition, I work a lot with independent learners, uh, like homeschoolers. I've been working with homeschoolers for a long time. So if you homeschool, you definitely want to check out my program. And then, obviously, I help those of you that are just struggling in your current math courses. Now, one thing I, uh, I can do for you, obviously, is provide you with great uh, math instruction, great videos, great materials, etc. But the one thing that you need to do for yourself that is critical that if you don't do, you're not going to do well in math, and that is the following. That's note-taking, okay? So over decades of teaching mathematics, it's crystal clear to me that those students who take excellent notes, I'm talking about fantastic notes, um, they always do well, uh, not surprisingly, you know, in their grades, and the reverse is true. Those students who are more into their cell phone, talking to their best friends in class and doing their homework in other classes. Listen, I get it. I was a student way back in the good old 1980s, and I did all of this, except for the cell phone part. We did have cell phones, but they were gigantic, and they cost like $5,000, and, uh, you know, nobody uh, had them, at least none of my friends. And if you walked into the classroom with one of these, yeah, the teacher would, you know, it looked like a CB. It was just like a huge uh, thing. Anyways, I don't want to digress, but the bottom line is this. No matter what uh, generation you grew up in, there was plenty of distractions in school. So the name of the game is focus. Focus is the name of, ga name of the game uh, in success uh, with anything you do, all right? And the only way you can focus while you're learning mathematics is to be taking great math notes. But in the meantime, as you're improving your math notes, I offer detailed comprehensive math notes to include pre-algebra, Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, and Trigonometry. Now, I state all this because you're watching this video, you want to learn about math. Okay, well, listen, I'm uh, going to teach you uh, something about compound interest here in a second. But 
you know, I really, really want to help you uh, master mathematics. And if you don't got this, you don't have this down or to have the right mindset, you're going to continue to struggle. Okay. So let's get into this compound interest problem. And uh, to solve this problem, we're going, we're going to need a formula. So let's check out that formula now. And here it is. It's right here in all its glory. So A equals P, parentheses 1 plus R, parentheses uh, T. Okay, you will need a calculator to help you out to solve this problem for sure. But this is the formula, this is the com uh, simple compound interest formula. And now let's kind of break it down. Now, let's start with this A. Well, this is the amount that we're trying to determine. Okay, this is the amount that after 10 years, we come back and check our bank account that we're going to grow. Okay, this is the end result of uh, what happened with our investment. This is the consequences of exponential growth. Now, uh, before we can get that uh, final amount, we need to put something in the bank for this particular example, and that would be our principal. So that's what that P is. And for this problem, it's going to be $500. Okay, so this P will be $500. Now, we have parentheses 1, okay, plus R. Okay, what is R? R is the annual interest rate. Okay, now it's 6% for this particular problem, but we want to, when we plug this in right here, it has to be as a decimal. So we're going to have to convert this uh, to a decimal. Hopefully all of you know how to do that. Okay, so we'll plug that in right there. And then T is the number of years this investment goes. So that's what that T is right there. And in this uh, example, that's 10 years. Now, most of you should be able to, um, you know, with the formula right here, just plug this in. If you want to kind of work along with me, you know, pause the video, get your calculator out and uh, go ahead and do the number crunching and see what you get. OK, because there's a part of this problem that students typically not all students, but a lot of students kind of will mess up. All right. And I see a lot of these uh, like, well, no, I was doing everything right. I had the right formula. I did everything right, but I got the answer wrong. Why? Well, I'm going to show you here. But uh, why don't you play along here for a second and try to do this uh, by yourself and see if you make this mistake, because I'm going to get into it right now. So if you don't want to see it, pause the video. All right, here we go. So here is the uh, solution to this problem. Again, we have our nice formula. Um, the amount is equal to the principal times 1 plus R times T. So we, as we discuss, our principal amount is 501. Okay, that's right there, R. So here's our... Uh, our principal is 500, R is 6%, but we have to um, express this as a decimal. So this is 0 0.06. So 6% as a decimal is 0 0.06. That's very, very important. So that's in one uh, place where students tend to mess up. They'll put in 1 plus 6, okay, uh, as they're, you know, this is 6%, but they didn't change this to a decimal. But that's not the, um, the uh, main error that I'm going to point out here in a second. All right, so then we have our T, that's our time, or 10 years. So this is the setup right here. Now let's continue to simplify this. Kind of scroll down a little bit. All right, so we have 500, 1 plus 0, 06, right? We're going to add this up. 1 plus 0, 0.06 is 1.06 to the 10th. Now, here is what students will do, many students. They'll take, they'll forget the good old-fashioned order of operations, PEMDAS, right? So, uh, parentheses, okay, we did what's inside parentheses. What's the E stand for? That's exponent. That's powers, okay? This is, this is we got to take the power here. So, you have to go well, into your calculator and go 1.06 to the 10th power. So, that would be 1.06. Uh, most calculators, you're going to have that caret key, or you'll have some key like this, and then you have to plug in 10 and get that decimal value out, okay? I don't have that here because uh, I would have kind of did this in advance, but you have to do that first. But a lot of students, uh, because they were not paying attention, they weren't taking good notes the day they taught order of operations, what they'll do is they'll go, oh, 500 times 1.06. They'll get that answer, and then they'll, they'll, they'll take that result to the 10th power, okay? That is wrong, okay? And, and unfortunately, a lot of students do that, and then they end up going like, I can't believe I did that problem or I did that mistake. Well, listen, you've got to be paying attention to all the little details, right? Okay, so 1.06 to the 10th power, we do this, and then we multiply by 500. And if you did that successfully, you'll get 895.42. But what does that mean? Well, that's 895.42. Uh, 
Okay, so how much money uh, would we have made? This is our final amount. So if the question is how much money uh, we, uh, was made in this investment, you have to subtract that from our original, right? Our original investment from $500, uh, and then we'll get this right here would be our actual return, okay? This is how much money we made. So you got to be careful because if uh, a question is like, how much money did you make um, on this particular investment? Well, you didn't make $895. Remember, you had to put in $500, so you have to subtract it out. So the, the second part of working with compound interest prompts or any uh, math prompts at that is paying attention and, uh, you know, really understanding the problem and, you know, looking at the details. So anyways, this is a good, nice little introduction problem for compound interest. And if uh, you enjoy this, of course, again, we're combining our favorite uh, topics, uh, money and math. Of course, a lot of you are out there like, yeah, yeah, you know, enough with the jokes, just stick with the math. Well, listen, you know, I try to I try to break it up. I need to have a good time when I'm making these videos as well. So if you uh, enjoyed this video, if you found it beneficial in some way, please consider smashing that like button. That helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, uh, please consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for a long time, over 10 years. I have over 1,000 videos on my channel organized from basic to advanced mathematics. My obsession, my passion is to teach math in a clear and un understandable way. So I have a lot of math here uh, on my channel. It's there for you. I want to help you out, okay? Of course, my best math help will be in my math help program, but nobody should be failing math these days. If you're struggling in math, you got to do your part, right? You got to do, you got to take notes, you got to work hard, you got to talk to your math teacher. But, you know, beyond that, there's so many resources. You have to take the initiative, take the control, and uh, find a teacher that, uh, you know, you enjoy learning from. Uh, and if you like my teaching style, then, you know, definitely I want to be able to help you out. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.